So coming to your uh, the tension rate platform today, we will continue to try to finish this. Now your Fx is the horizontal force, summation of your horizontal wave current and the other wind forces. Now your NT and TT is your cable tension. So Fx you can write, so tan phi is uh, in this form NT, TT, tan phi, <coughs> is it okay? So this, uh, this one Fx is NTT of tan phi, phi is this angle. <coughs> so now uh, this phi you have already calculated as from the previous diagram if you look. So this was uh, sin inverse of x by L t. So you can calculate phi. So from this tan <coughs> phi you can get this is the horizontal offset force. Now offset this angle phi is of the order of say 5 degrees. So you can approximate this into fx is equals to nt over tt l multiplied by x. Tan phi, sin phi more or less you can say the same. So uh, this is our expression for the horizontal offset. Now coming to the tendon tension, this is more complicated. So tendon tension actually is made up of two parts. So the first part you can write TT1, so this is 1 by NT, sum, you sum all the column forces, sigma F Z C in the Z direction and the pontoon forces in the Z direction. So this is 1, so the, now this is uh, This is at wave crest. Now coming to the hydrodynamics part, actually this is more complicated and uh, you will find that the situation is like this. Say the TLP is riding a crest, say this is your still water level and this is the crest of the wave. Now you have to calculate the wave particle velocity and acceleration. Now for all practical purposes you use the linear wave theory, okay. There are other second order forces but uh, uh, which will be more complicated. Now let us suppose this is the situation, TLP is riding a crest. Now here actually the forces are more or less simpler. Say this is your TLP. Now, what is happening out here is that at the crest, the uh, acceleration, the horizontal acceleration, you write this is 0, okay. Now, your uh, water particle acceleration vectors will come like this. at a crest. Now this will exert a outward force on the column. So this is happening and your tendon tension will be acting downward say from this end. What are the other forces? Your uh, out here in the columns, you get 
a force this is force on at the base of the column this is the base of the column there will be another force and here another force will be acting downwards so this is actually in the lot of hydrodynamic forces are coming into play now in, in this kind of situation you will find this expression is valid this tt1 <coughs> you simply add the column and the pontoon forces now the other the problem is when it is riding a so this is you write crest centered so tlp is crest centered now suppose the wave has passed the direction of wave travel is in this direction from right to left this is your wave travel so at uh, every time you will not find the tlp sitting on a crest okay so the wave has passed the the tlp is no more under a crest but this is called a node so actually this part of the st uh, structure is more on the hydrodynamic side so this is a tlp is now resting in this mode so your force equations will change so uh, this this kind of situation is called node centered wave crest centered wave you write and this one is called so this is one node so this is another node where the <coughs> wave crosses the still water line so this is called a node centered wave so actually in the uh, you have to be very careful in the analysis of the wave forces this is called node centered now here actually you will find that when the the direction of wave travel is the same so this is your wave travel now what will happen in this kind of situation there will be a inertia of force so you have to calculate the moment of these inertia of forces and there will be a trim because of the passage of the wave the the whole trp now this is acting under this is tethered okay now because of the tether it cannot ride the wave as it as a free floating structure semi submersible so it will tend to trim trimming action now how to resist this trimming moment it will tend to capsize so that is countered by what is called a inertia force your inertia force is going to act in this direction so this is your fixed mass inertia what is fixed mass what is the mass of the platform fixed mass inertia force now if you want to calculate this you have to calculate the mass of the platform and the acceleration in the horizontal direction now this now tlp you should remember that tlp kg is near the deck just below the deck so if kg is very high <coughs> so that is uh, not very suitable for your stability calculations so stability is actually provided by the tension in the tethers now tlp mass is somewhere situated say around this juncture here it is shown on the deck level of course the top sides 
I have not shown, but in your diagram it is somewhere here. Okay. Now there is another force that is also an inertia force that is acting in, at the foot of the column. Now here actually all these calculations uh, in the field, if you do then you can grasp the problem. So this is called a hydrodynamic inertia force. Now, in, in common terms, this is called your added mass, so which is you are more familiar. So you have to calculate these forces and this of course, you have to calculate the added mass say m prime multiplied by the acceleration. You should always remember that inertia force is always connected with acceleration. So, these are the two predominant forces, the other forces you will find the tendon tension on the this column it is acting downwards, but on the other column it is acting upwards. So, your force vectors have changed. So, you have to uh, analyze a number of positions of the TLP with respect to the wave and you find out the disposition of the forces, then you ca calculate the overturning moment, moments as well as the forces and your maximum you write the other term is uh, he has calculated the moment. So, the first term I have given you is T T 1 now the second term you can denote as T i 1 divided by S n T. Now, S is the length of a tether. S denotes length of tether. So, from the second diagram you calculate all the moments and divided by the moment term S, S and T is the moment term actually, number of tethers and this is your length because you are, you are summating all the forces. So, F W X this is Z W you try to find out the center of these forces and this is your moment M 0 is the moment and Z G. So, this moment divided by the lever arm will give you the force and this is del actually your delta M naught is your added mass. So, this is mass plus added mass and this is your hydrodynamic force. So, this multiplied by the acceleration, the other one is on the force in the columns. So, you try to find out the moment. So, this is AC is the lever arm plus the moment on the pontoon. So, all these moments are uh, calculated and divided by the lever arm, you get the force. So, this is now you, the other thing that you have to find out is maximum tendon tension. Now, this is very important. So, you have to find out the breaking stress. So, you should see that the maximum tendon tension does not exceed the big breaking strength. So, this will be maximum of T x omega, omega is depends on the wave frequency. So, this is your root over of this T t 1. So, at a particular frequency you are getting this. So, you write this square plus T i square, this is also a particular wave frequency. So, this is maximum tendon tension. Now, this you compare with breaking strength. So, uh, calculating cable tension is not all that easy because you have to find out the center of all these forces and moments, calculate the lever arm and then. So, this, this is as it is. Now, here you will find that uh, uh, if this is the situation, then breaking strength you can go for high tensile steel. 
tendon material. Tendon material composition change. Normally, the hull you can make of mild steel in ships, normally use a Lloyd's grade a mild steel, and all that. but if you come to the tethers tension, then the mild steel, of course, won't do. You have to go for high tensile steel, and nowadays they are making it of uh, one or two materials joined together. So, that is called a hybrid. So, these are some of the things that are going on. Uh, same thing are riser actually, you know, because of this. Uh, force calculations. Um, and the other thing that we have found out is the water depth actually plays an, plays an important part. Cable tension. Now, can you figure this out? where water depth is important. So, in our first calculation you can see this the horizontal offset. So, this actually depends on L, L is the length of cable that means water depth. So, here actually the water depth is coming into play and F x actually plays a role in your tension T T cable tension. So, water depth actually is crucial for cable tension. So, in these are the two guiding parameters for tension design, tension in cables. So, this is the peculiarity of a TSB as opposed to semi submersible Now, uh, the coming to the motions. motions are actually little bit different from semi submersible because of <coughs> cable constraints. Now, here actually you will find there is a springing motion. Now, this happens when wave energy is close to platform natural frequency or is close to natural period. So, this causes resonance. So, this is called springing. Now, springing first thing you the amplitude of response is becomes more. And also frequency. Now, this actually the frequency causes discomfort to crew. Now, how to correct this? Uh, there is another force I am telling you that will also come. So, this is a cause of vertical acceleration. This is a cause of vertical acceleration in the platform. Now, the other phenomena this is called ringing. <coughs> so, these are a high frequency response.
is from from impulse. From impulse load in extreme seas. Now, this is transient in nature. So, that means when a very large wave comes and impacts the platform, the platform vibrates like this. So, that is called ringing. So, these are high frequency response, the other one is a low frequency one. Now, this actually causes tendon failure. Now, actually, so th that means when you are calculating the hydrodynamic load, you should know this extreme sea states. Mm, they do not occur all times in the open ocean, but sometimes they can create havoc on the platform. So, these are some of the <coughs> points that you should remember and uh, for this, the code that you follow is API American Petroleum Institute, API report 2 T. I do not have these reports, but these reports the of the American Petroleum Institute are fundamental in your design. So, wherever you are designing your semi submersible TLPs, you either follow, you follow, should follow both these codes ABS API or DNV API. So, these are some of the characteristics which will come. Now, coming to the sizing, or geometry. So, basically this is your line plan. Now, you will find that all these platforms, there is TLP or sensor there. I mean regular in shapes, not like your ships uh, curvature changes and all that is more or less not there. So, these are actually prismatic shape, uniform cylindrical surfaces or square pontoons. Now, a debate has in, uh, ensued whether columns can be circular or can be rectangular. Columns. TLP, whether you go for circular or you go for a square type column. So, which one you prefer? Now, if you go for this circular design, so that means the structure is radial and these are square means flat panels. Okay. Now, these are actually difficult to fabricate. Now, square is very easy, simple, flat panels, but square if you go, the corners you have to make round. So, in marine structures actually you will find you are normally averse to sharp bends or sharp corners. You always make it round like this. Now, here actually a lot of designs have evolved on this uh, aspect the circular or square columns, which one is to be preferred. <coughs> now, uh, mm, this is one point and columns I told you basically act as deck support. So, deck is supported on the four corners by the four columns. Now, the problem that has come up is regard you will find in the simplest of design that is the TLP deck is resting on four columns okay, at the four corners. Now, columns are also another point of engagement of the tethers tethers are also connected to the columns at the base. So, where 
the columns are located there you have to locate the cable is not it uh, you do not have much choice in this kind of geometry. So, geometries you have evolved from this and now people are also now what they have done the engineers they have made a protrusion on the column. So, this is called if you <coughs> draw a 3 D view. So, this is one column. <coughs> now, here the pontoon is called a closed array pontoon. You make a closed sort of array. Now, you still keep the columns at the corners of this closed array. But there is an important difference you will find and why it has been done I will tell you. So, this is the position of another column. So, another column is coming. So, this is called a closed array. You have another column out here, another column out here. Now, this is called inner pontoons. Now, here you make a protrusion, you join smaller pontoons out here. <coughs> and here you can see. Now, why you are doing this? Of course, in the book you will get a so this is called exterior pontoons. Now, you can attach the tethers at the corners of this exterior pontoons. Now, the reason is you make a greater tendon spacing. You increase tendon spacing. But in this, see if you do not have the exterior pontoons, you have to place the tendons or cables at the bottom of the columns. So, that means your tendon spacing will reduce. Now, this is done purposely in order to reduce the pitching or the pitch force. Pitching will come in the situation that I have told you where in the TLP is riding a particular node not at the crest, but in this case you will find the TLP will tend to top topple over. So, that is called a pitching or trimming will occur. In order to prevent this it has been found that if you increase the, this is called the tendon spread. So, that will reduce your pitching force because you are getting a greater lever arm. So, obviously your force on the uh, tendon will decrease. So, that is one way out. The other advantage that you are getting is you are not disturbing the deck support. If you place the columns at the outer end of this exterior pontoon, then your the deck span will increase. So, you are not increasing the deck span, deck is efficiently supported. So, columns are essential points for deck support and you have done this, this is called a radial, I think the, this is called a radial array probably. Now, if in some other design, you will find these columns are brought together more closer, but 
<coughs> these exterior pontoons are much more longer in that previous diagram that I have drawn because there actually the deck area is not that much required. So, here actually you can alter the deck area or deck spacing without disturbing the uh, this thing tendon arm. So, that is one uh, uh, area of the design of TLP. So, TLP design actually you will find is more centered on motion limitation. So, column spacing you write dictated by deck support. Now, if you find that uh, your four columns are not sufficient in your 1980s design, you will find there is another column on the at the you can place another columns on the uh, center of these pontoons, but you will find the deck there is no support at the there is this kind of closed structure does not have any braces or support at the center uh, without brace. So, essentially your TLP you have to design without braces because at the center you should you should have some opening for your conductor pipes to pass. So, conductors spacing on the deck that will also govern the size of the inner pontoons, uh, I mean the gap in the <coughs> in between the inner pontoons. So, this is called the pontoon spacing and this is the column spacing. So, these are some of the column spacing is dictated by deck support and uh, pitch moment. This is an important area, pitch moment defines what defines tendon spacing. So, lot of mechanics actually you have to calculate. Now, coming to this uh, uh, the preliminary design where you have to define the form. This is basically your form definition. Now, here have to you have to allocate allocate pontoon volume or pontoon displacement and column displacement. Mind you, these are in the initial design you have to work this as separate. So, how much pontoon displacement you have to allocate for the from the total displacement, now what principles <coughs> govern this? So, this you will find is based on motions. So, there is a relation between pontoon volume and total displacement. Now, in mostly you will find pontoon volume, pontoon volume will be less than one third of total displacement. Displacement or this delta is total displacement. So, you do not go for random sizing of pontoon and the um, column. Uh, just increasing the <coughs> volume will be, we will increase the motions and uh, that will be a disaster. So, this is one of the, con co this is called column to pontoon size. Keep platform away from 
resonant zone or resonant frequency. So, here actually the ratios of the column radius and the pontoon thing has not been given, but that is also very essential. Now, column height. So, this actually less height consumes less steel. So, this is point to be remembered. You give less column height, you consume because column diameters are very large column height consumes less steel, so reduces cost. Now, every time you find that you have to optimize between different parameters, you are not free and you are doing this ok, you are reduce, try to reduce the cost by <coughs> bringing down the column height. Now, here actually you have to sacrifice on air gap. sacrifice on air gap. Now, air gap I am telling you is very crucial in TLB because TLB has a set down with the passage of wave the TLB actually then when, when there is a offset that delta z will come. So, then again the if you are not having sufficient air gap the whole wave will come and crash on the deck. So, this but at the same time you have to try to optimize between these two that is column length and air gap. You do not go on, now if you increase column height, what, what will happen? Suppose you find that you want to give very high air gap, so you, you high air gap can be given by increasing the column height, but here you find first of, you, you increase the cost no doubt but from the mechanics point of view, you will find that your CG has gone up. So, that will cause a uh, overturning though the stability will be a problem because of your GM criteria. So, this is you have to strike a balance between these two column diameter. Your column diameter, if you have sufficient diameter, so that will give you a sufficient base area for support to your deck, is not it. But column diameter, if you randomly increase, this increases, increases wave forces. Well, that is another problem you will find. So, you cannot arbitrarily increase column diameter. So, this you now here actually the ratios are not given, but you find when you design you better you go for similar uh, TLPs. Now, here the problem that I have told you is that in your preliminary design first thing you make a weight summary. Now, this is very important for calculation of displacement and buoyancy, hydrostatics. You make a but weight summary at the initial stages how you do, you do not have data. So, here actually what has been done? Normally, you find from similar ships, if you have weight summary or similar TLPs, 
or take recourse to some empirical formulas. Empirical formulas based on column diameter, pontoon length and all these things. So, there is a quick thumb rule for arriving at the displacement. So, once you find out the parameters of length, diameter, etc., now the next job is find out the displacement and then you have to work out the buoyancy. So, buoyancy should have give sufficient tension in the cable. Your cable at all times should be taut, it should not be loose or uh, having some curvature, then it will play havoc. Then you have lots of motions and the cable will try to get twisted with one another. This so warping will come, the, the platform will try to rotate. So that is quite very dangerous because that will lead to cable snap. So here you take recourse to empirical formulas, you decide on the displacement. So this is the first part of sizing. Now the second is the motion calculation. The motions I have already told you, uh, motions you will find the most important is the pontoon volume by col column volume. This is a ratio which determines the heave and surge motions. Uh, the data I have not got, so I cannot give you now. And the next is stability check. So these are the important arms of your preliminary design the spokes in the design spiral. Now stability <coughs> is very, very important during installation. Now here you find your GM and GZ, GZ, GM all everything has to be calculated. And uh, the other point is during transportation. especially what, especially dry transport, so this the installation and transportation phase actually determines your CG of the platform. Now when you are transporting the TLP say on a offshore barge. So obviously you cannot keep the G very high, isn't there are the definite rules on the ABS will give you definite guideline for this sort of thing, transportation. This is called dry transport. Okay, you look up ABS requirement on damage stability. Uh, sorry, not damage stability or dynamic stability. GZ curve. Okay. What is the proportion of this area, not the total area? The ratio is I am telling you there is a thumb rule of 1.3, I think. Right? Uh, ABS criteria. So these you just look up your ABS criteria during transport, dry transport, or installation. So specific procedures are given in relation to GZ and GM calculation. Now after this, uh, by this time, uh, but uh, here actually the installation and transportation. If you find that your GZ and GM is not Favorable because these are again optimized values. It will depend on your column length, column height, pontoon, and all these things. Right? 
you cannot vary much then you do not transport or install in rough weather you always try to install and go for transportation in favorable weather so weather actually plays an important criteria during the installation and transportation phase now so here the decision that fix these items after your preliminary design columns now you have already fixed column cross section now in ships actually what do you fix in preliminary design then breadth draft and all that so similarly here your column cross section is one important parameter then comes column draft now next is column spread so these are some of the important parameters which you have to find out after preliminary design column height the water plane area now water plane is given by the column cross section so water plane area is very important for heave calculation and last is immersed with regard to columns of course immersed column volume so these are the parameters to be found for the columns after you fix your displacement now if you have interior pontoons so that means you can see you have to fix up so many parameters in ships hardly you will find there are four or five or six parameters now here you have to find out pontoon cross section pontoon length <coughs> so you you see the columns and pontoons are different uh, what is has to do pontoon spread the distance between the two transverse pontoon that is called pontoon spread now pontoon spread is actually di dictated by column column spacing then of course pontoon volume so all these items have to be uh, calculated then comes if you have exterior pontoons then again cross section so similarly pontoon length so this will pontoon length will depend on radial <coughs> volume volume center rather so because your exterior pontoons are this is basically your location of the center of gravity pontoon length uh, <coughs> pontoon spread vertical center there is your vcg now why this is important vertical center submergence you will find this vertical center of the pontoon 
is actually the location point for your tendon, the cable actually. So, uh, pontoon volume, I have already talked about pontoon length, you calculate pontoon volume. and total displaced volume. And before you finish, you find out tendon spread. and <coughs> depth of pivot point. So, these are some of the parameters which you have to fix in your preliminary design. Now, the limitations first thing that you do here is you in your design spiral first at every stage I have told you installation, transportation and operation mode, you find this out. Operating, installation, transportation. You find initial stability. Find initial and damage stability. So, your uh, these are the three basics load criteria, load stability. In these three modes, you have to find out your GM, GZ curve, damage GZ, you have all these things you have to do. Now, this you can do it your max surf and multi surf you will find you can do it. Now, this you compare with rules. Now, your first job. Now, next job is <coughs> based on this you change if you do not have this sufficient stability, then change parameters. <coughs> uh, basic job. Next, calculate motions. Rouse have to be calculated. These of course, normally what they do is you make a model and do tank test in order to determine this. So, it is best done in a sea keeping tank, which of course, we do not have. So, <coughs> this is now here you fix if you have favorable motions, fix pontoon volume by col column volume. So, your parameters are guided by specifically these two conditions. And last is your structures, structural analysis.
Now, structural analysis, there are two types. One, you have to find out global strength. And the other is called local strength. This I will discuss later on. So, after you do all these three calculations, then you can fix up your parameters. Now, with that we finish preliminary design. So, after this you go for detailed design. end here because 